What's good, YouTube? It's your boy, Blue Blood Sports TV, back at y'all with another one. So, we know July 29th marks the highly anticipated, undisputed, undefeated, welterweight showdown. Massive, biggest fight we had in 42 years between undefeated, unified, three belt WBA, WBC, IBF welterweight world champion superstar boxer who is widely considered by many to be top two if not the number one definitely top five pound for pound best fighters in the world and earl the truth spence jr who is 28 wins no loss and no draw 22 big wins by way of knockout 33 years of age five foot nine and a half with a 72 inch arm reach with that said errol spence is looking like an absolute spartan he's not doing much talking right he's looking enormous right his traps look huge he's coming to do damage as he stated i'm big stepping errol spence don't respect terence crawford's physical size okay terence crawford is his opponent july 29th terence crawford is three division champion undisputed junior welterweight world champion and the reigning wbo welterweight world champion who is widely considered by many to be the number one best pound for pound fighter in the world with a record of 39 wins no losses no draw 30 big wins by way of knockout 35 years of age five foot eight with a 74 inch arm reach terence crawford started his career at 130 became a champion 135 140 and now 147. he's a wiry frame his background is wrestling that's, I believe, Terrence Crawford's number one love, wrestling. But Terrence Crawford, he started his career in smaller weight classes and lower weight classes. And so Terrence Crawford um, is naturally the smaller guy. Errol Spence, again, started his career at 154. Terrence Crawford started his career at 130. Errol Spence went down to 147 to dominate the welterweight division and unify the belts. Terrence Crawford moved up. It took years for him to move up to get to where he's at today, right? So with that said, Errol Spence has been steadfast that Terrence Crawford is just simply too small for him, okay? Uh, even when they came face to face, Errol Spence said, you're too small, you're too light. And Terrence Crawford said, nobody said Floyd Mayweather was too light. And he said, you ain't Floyd. Errol Spence said, you ain't Floyd. Floyd is a different animal, different beast. Um, even if you watch Floyd train today, at 45, 46 years of age, his reflexes are still there. Completely an anomaly. So Errol said, you ain't Floyd. So we've seen some little bits of photos and clips of Errol Spence now. Errol Spence did the interview with Terrence Crawford on Stephen A. Smith, first take, with Stephen A. Smith on first take. And he said, I'm big stepping as soon as the bell rings. As soon as the first bell rings, I'm big stepping. And now you see these photos of Errol Spence. And I know a lot of people that they're discussing, they're saying, um, Errol Spence ain't the same guy since he suffered that horrific car accident, okay, back in uh, October of 2019. Errol Spence came out, he said he lost all his teeth in a car accident. Uh, in a Danny Garcia fight and a Yodana Sugis fight, when they hit him, he thought his teeth came out, right? So obviously there was some adjustments. Errol Spence has not been active. He only fought twice since 2019, two times in five years or four years, four and a half years. Um, and so those are the concerns that people have, ring rust and is he the same guy? Errol Spence mentally is very physical, okay? He's physically imposing. He's a natural southpaw, fundamentally sound. Uh, Terrence Crawford is not as fundamentally sound as Errol Spence is. I rewatched last night, Sean Porter fight, two-time welterweight world champion, now retired future Hall of Famer, Showtime Sean Porter. Sean Porter's fight with Terrence Crawford. I rewatched it, uh, the whole fight, once in its entirety, and then I got through to the sixth round the second time after I did my live stream last night. Uh, up until 3, 3.30 in the morning, I rewatched the fight, right? 
And uh, as I rewatched it, the physicality of Sean Porter gave Terrence Crawford tons and tons of problems. Tons and tons and tons of problems. The physicality of Sean Porter gave Terrence Crawford problems. Right? And Errol Spence, Sean Porter is five foot seven and a half, maybe five foot eight. Um, he has a 68 and a half inch arm each, maybe 69 inch arm each. Um, I think Sean Porter in his era had the best feet, the best footwork in all of boxing. Just so graceful, so ballet-ish, you know, uh, with his movements and his ability to to hesitate, then come inside and then go side to side and, and, and you know, turn you in little areas. So athletic. <coughs> the thing that Sean Porter lacked was power. <coughs> if Sean Porter had the slightest bit of Errol Spence's power, Keith Thurman's power, Danny Garcia's power, and even Terrence Crawford's power, if Sean Porter had Adrian Broner's problem, power, he may have knocked out Terrence Crawford. At least he would have knocked down Terrence Crawford in that fight. Right? Um, he caught Terrence Crawford in awkward positions uh, many a times. Right? Uh, clean, clipping Terrence Crawford just didn't have the power to capitalize on it. Again, if he had the slightest bit of Adrian Broner's prop power, he would have dropped Terrence Crawford. Maybe maybe knocked him out, right? Now, Terrence Crawford is durable. Uh, he's shown that he's, you know, his chin is sturdy. So I'm just talking about based off the reaction that Terrence Crawford had to getting hit by Sean Porter. If he got hit by Danny Garcia or Keith Thurman, or Errol Spence, or uh, Jerron Boots Ennis, clean like that, he would at least went down because he was out of position on top of it. Maybe he may not have been hurt, but he would have dropped, right? Uh, there's a couple of times when Sean Porter landed these clean right hands and Terrence Crawford was out of position, he would have he went down if that was anybody else with the slightest bit of power. Sean Porter just doesn't have knockout power. And when I watch that, and I watch Errol Spence's physicality, now, what I did notice, as I'm gonna do in my official fight prediction and breakdown, Terrence Crawford, when he decided to turn it on against Sean Porter, his counter punching in the inside is beautiful, beautiful counter punching on the inside. Uh, until last night, I didn't even give him enough credit. I'm like, man, Terrence Crawford is not that that you know uh, good on the inside. He smart. No, I was completely wrong. Terrence Crawford counter punching on the inside is beautiful work. Very accurate. Very fast combinations. Uppercut hooks. Bang bang on the inside. But his defense, he gets clipped in those positions. Now, when you look at Errol Spence versus your Danis Ugas, that that area where Terrence Crawford is clean, bang, bang, those combinations, Errol Spence was getting clipped by your Danis Ugas. And again, your Danis Ugas don't have the power. If your Danis Ugas had the power of Terrence Crawford, Danny Garcia, Adrian Broner, Keith Thurman, Jerron Ennis, he may have badly hurt Errol Spence in that fight, but he didn't have the power. I know Errol Spence and Derry James, well-renowned two-time trainer year, future Hall of Famer, Derry James, future Hall of Famer, one of the best trainers in the world. I know that Derry James and, and Errol Spence have watched this fight with Sean Porter and they understood Sean Porter too many times in this fight took his foot off the gas. Sean Porter looked like he fatigued. He definitely took his foot off the gas. He was being strategic with his with his aggression. But if he was more aggressive, I saw a point in the fight 
of something I never saw before. In the seventh round, Terrence Crawford was tired. In the seventh round, Terrence Crawford, I saw him taking deep breaths in the seventh round. And then Andre Ward said, Terrence Crawford looks a little bit gassed, looks a little bit tired. And I rewatched it, I'm like, he does. Because of the the mental pressure, the physical pressure, Sean, press, Sean Porter pressure you every second of every minute of every round. Errol Spence, this size, you see his traps, he's working on taking those punches. He knows coming in, he's gonna get clipped by Terrence Crawford. But he also knows once I'm there, I'm gonna stay there. And he's working on his, you see his traps, he's working on being able, now obviously nobody wants to get hit clean and often, but he's working on that. And Terrence Crawford has to be a boxer in this fight. He has to move. He has to be elusive. He has to fight like he fought Victor Post style and how he fought uh, uh, um, Jose Benavidez Jr. That's Errol Spence training methods is to be in Terrence Crawford's chest every second of every minute of every round. He is going to adopt the Sean Porter style. The thing is, Andre Ward said this in the commentary. Andre Ward said he is gassing Terrence Crawford out and he's making Terrence Crawford work harder than he wants to and he's not even being who he typically is and he's not going to the body. Earl Spence gonna go to the body once he get in there. They saw that. I'm telling you, 1000%, they saw that and Terrence Crawford gotta be prepared. So Earl Spence said he's big stepping and coming to Terrence Crawford's body and I believe him. Can't wait to see how it unfolds. But that's all I got for y'all. Make sure you hit the like button, drop a comment in the comment section, let me know what y'all think. Y'all already know what it is. It's your boy Blue, Blue Blood Sports TV. Hate, like, comment, and subscribe. You haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, hit the bell icon to get all the new notifications. Follow me on Instagram at Blue Blood Sports TV, all in one word. Y'all already know what it is. Shout out to the entire LDBC. Shout out to Black Media Row. Make sure you like your shady videos. That's all I got for y'all. Peace.